Hello guys, it's Simak here. Uh, today it's exciting. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Java certification program, uh, specifically Java 8 certification program. So I'm going to walk you through all the things that you need in order to pass this exam and become successful, okay? Make sure you follow all these uh, instructions and tips that I'm giving you, that I'm about to give you. They're actually secret. Uh, I've done it. Uh, I've done many exams. I've uh, around 20 years experience in software development, networking infrastructure, cloud computing and programming and DevOps. So, uh, okay, let's get started. So there are two aspects for uh, in any exam, right? So the first part, there are two parts. The first part is your mental preparation and having enough knowledge to pass any exam, right? Uh, let me let me uh, let's explore this more so when you're getting ready for any exam you need to understand uh, the circumstances the number of the question the scope of the exam right you need to understand that the night before the exam you need to get enough rest right you need to exam for any exam you need to understand how to how to time yourself right to finish the material you need to know when you're sitting in an exam if you're getting two minutes per question there are tricks that I'm going to tell you in uh, how, how to basically follow those uh, instructions and steps to, to make sure you're successful, right? So the second part is actually the technical Java, Java side of it. And uh, again, if you follow these steps, you're definitely guaranteed you're going to pass the exam. Okay, let's get started. The first thing, uh, you, you want to make sure you have a copy of this book, right? Even if you are doing OCA or OCP, it doesn't matter if you're getting... Uh, Java certification, Oracle certification, make sure you have a copy of this one. You can get it from Amazon, right? I'll put the link uh, down below. So this book basically covers uh, everything you want to know and you need uh, in order to pass this exam, right? So the question is, do you really need to be certified? Uh, my answer is yes. And I'll tell you in a, in a second why. So when you learn a new programming language or, you know, you basically get comfortable with new concept in object-oriented programming. Let's say you want to learn Python, right? You learn Python and you start, you know, learning the code, how to write, you know, conditioning statements, how to write variables, things like that, right? So there are two ways to basically prove your knowledge. The first way will be by building something, right? Let's say you build a nice platform that, you know, handles ad tech platform or helps, you know, advertiser to do things better or more efficient. And you put it on GitHub and, you know, everyone can take a look at your code and see what you can do with actually Python, right? Knowing Python or knowing any other language, you know, on its own, it's, it's not useful, guys. All right. Are you following? So building something or actually getting certified will basically validate your knowledge, validates that you're comfortable. You know how to solve problems, you know how to tackle issues, you know, what type of data structure you use. And we'll, we'll go, you know, through all those things, uh, you know, in future videos. But I want to make sure I'm clear that uh, getting certified basically will validate your knowledge for uh, all the employers. For It basically brings a lot of attention to your brand. Uh, if you have a LinkedIn profile, you can definitely put all these certification and, you know, uh, people start, you know, approaching you. Hey, uh, you have all these nice certifications. Are you interested in? So it basically opens up a lot of opportunities, right? Uh, because you're basically proving that you have the ability to write code, for example, in Java 8, right? All right. So the exam, it's actually pretty easy if you follow this, this step. So if you're a Java programmer, right? Let's say you're an experienced Java programmer and you're definitely familiar with IDEs like Eclipse, right? And uh, you get all those nice features, all those, you know, helpers, all those uh, IntelliSense, you know, uh, hints uh, from the IDE, right? But what happens in real exam, when you sit at the exam, uh, you don't have access to any IDE, right? So basically you need to have a good imagination what the good code looks like, what the main function exactly looks like, right? Uh, so in order to accomplish that, you need to practice on non-standard IDEs, like just Notepad, right? Pick a Notepad, it doesn't have anything. It's just a piece of paper, like white paper, and start typing your code. Then if you want to test your code, copy your code from Notepad to IDE and run it, and then understand why it works and why it doesn't work. So exam creators, you know, they want to basically trick you and basically help you fail, right? 
in, a, in an easier way, if I want to say it. So if the code doesn't compile as one option, it's, it might be, you know, most likely is the right answer. And the first thing, in fact, you have to check is if the code compiles or not, right? Because uh, a lot of times, you know, uh, exam creators, they do weird things with the code, like, you know, casting a, you know, a string class to an integer or, you know, things that basically, let's say you want to put wrong material in primitive int, you want to put, you know, float number that won't compile, right? So check the, you know, uh, code basically best practices and uh, look for all the uh, completion errors, right? That's the first thing you want to make sure. I cannot, uh, you know, uh, I cannot repeat this enough. Uh, so please make sure you look at the code first and make sure it compiles, right? Uh, as you're reading the exam, you the questions, right? And you, let's say you're sitting in the exam, the, the clock's just started, and it's the first question and you don't know what to do, right? So how to approach this? So in those situations, don't get stuck, right? Just mark it and move on in 10 seconds. So that way, if you have two, two, two minutes, let's say you have two minutes per question, that way you've just say one minute and 45 seconds that you can spend on something that you might actually mark a point, right? So if you get stuck, move on, and then you'll come back to it later. Don't waste five minutes on one question that you're not sure, right? So that way you answer all the questions that for sure you know the right answer. And then at the end, you'll have enough time. Hopefully you get a few you know, uh, points and then pass the exam, right? So don't get stuck. Don't look at the time constantly. Don't get panicked, right? You have to get used to it. You have to be comfortable with putting yourself under pressure. You have to be comfortable, right? Put timer and you know start taking a uh, mock test, right? Uh, there's a lot of mock tests, uh, you know, out there. I'll definitely, you know, give you guys a few uh, so you can practice when you're ready, when you finish this, right? But uh, get comfortable with with that time, you know, timing thing, timing concept. Don't waste too much time on uh, on a specific uh, question and don't get stuck. Well, uh, so we talked about why you need to get certified. Of course, there's a lot of competition out there. People are learning new things fast and, you know, on a daily basis. A lot of experienced programmers, but if you want to, you know, land a great job, if you want to have a bright future, you definitely uh, want to think about certifications, right? Certifications validate your knowledge. Uh, we talked about that. Well, uh, we talked about when, you sit in, uh, when you're sitting at the exam, you want to make sure you have your eyes on, on the time, right? You have to practice this and you know get comfortable with not having enough time to deal with a challenge in real life right sometimes you don't get enough time you have to finish the project in two weeks right and there's no way around it uh, focus on so now, now let's move on and let's go to the next step which is basically how to prepare for the exam right so again uh this is the book right that you need a copy uh, and this book is, let me tell you how many pages, 300 and I don't know, 78, 79, right? 380 pages. This book will cover everything that you need to know for the exam. But here's how you do it. You start from, from chapter one, right? And you understand all the concepts, right? Let's say uh, the book talks about primitives, right? And data types. You, know, you want to make sure you understand all those concepts. And as you can see, and I'm going to show you right now, you want to highlight all the things that you know you feel is comfortable, uh, important, and you want to uh, come back to later. And if you look, I even have like a uh, you know divider by just folding the paper on top to make sure you know uh, when I want to review the you know important concepts uh, before the exam. Let's say two days before the exam, uh, I can come back to it and just review them. Right. Uh, make sure you get enough uh, night sleep, good night sleep before. A lot of people make this mistake and they think if they, you know, review a few uh, pages and, you know, spend five more minutes, it's going to make a difference. Actually, that's not going to help you. That's going to help you fail, you know, very fast in the exam because exam is exhausting. You know, you have three hours, two hours, I don't know, uh, 77 questions. They're tough questions. You've paid 20, uh, 250 bucks for it, right? And you fail, uh, you get disappointed, you want to, you know, put again time in, come back to it later. So you don't want that to happen, right? But if you follow the things that I'm about to tell you regarding the technical side of the exam, uh, you will have enough, you know, understanding in order to pass your Java certification, Java 8 certification, right? 
so when you want to, uh, so first of all, you know, there's a lot of distraction around us every day, right? Social media, uh, watching TV, walk, you know, walk the dog, go shopping, do this, do that. So you want to make sure you put time blocks, right? So let's say you decide, hey, I can put uh, 60 minutes, I can put 90 minutes every night, right? Uh, f to study for the exam. Actually, in fact, a lot of successful people like Jerry Seinfeld, right? You definitely know him. Uh, he had this habit of, he developed the habit of building a funny stories uh, one day, once a day, right? So he had a calendar on his wall and uh, he used to mark with the, with the red cross on it and his goal was to not break the chain, right? Let's think about it, not breaking the chain. So you wanna practice constantly. The path to success is to be consistent, right? So put the time block, right? Let's say whatever it is, right? Whatever you're comfortable with, uh, and then, and then, uh, you know, commit to it and and do it, right? And don't take, you know, uh, breaks every ten minutes, every five minutes. Don't check your phone. And in fact, there's a good book called Deep Work. Um, you can actually refer to it. It's very useful. It basically helps you learn how to how to basically secure your time for the most important things in your life, which one of them is your, you know, right now is your OCA uh, certification, Java certification program, and that's why you're watching this, this video, right? Well, what do you want to understand? You want to understand, you have a good understanding before sitting an exam about primitives, right? About data types. Uh, can I store this, these type of numbers in this variable or not? Can I... So that's one thing. You want to understand how the arithmetic functions will affect the data type. Like if you add two short data type, it will definitely promote to integer. You cannot store that result in a short variable, right? You understand that. You want to make sure you have a good understanding about wrapper classes and um, basically, uh, you know, autoboxing, like converting primitives to wrapper classes, like converting int to integer class, right? Converting Boolean to Boolean class, right? So string. String is probably, you know, it, you will see at least, uh, I don't know, a lot a lot of questions. I, I don't want to, you know, give you exact number, but a lot of questions regarding strings, right? Because it's very important to work with a string in Java. And one of them is you have to understand that strings are uh, immutable, right? Uh, basically, you cannot extend any immutable class. That's one fact you understand. And uh, if you change, uh, you know, immutable classes, like if you run substring, if you apply substring function on a string, it won't actually affect the object reference, right? It won't affect, it won't save this, uh, you know, change. It won't keep it. So you have to store it and assign it to the string variable after, you know, performing some functions, right? A lot of questions in exam, you will see it says string dot, you know, string s equal whatever your name, and then it says s dot substring from one to six, right? And then it prints out, it says, what's the result? So the result is definitely is what you had when you declared the value, not the substring, right? Unless you save the substring value back into the variable and print it out, right? So uh, let's let's go to the next one. In Java 8, uh, they're actually very nice features, they're very useful features. Uh, that they've added, one of them is lambda functions. Lambda functions are basically anonymous functions that you can pass around and use them on the fly. It's They're actually quite useful in real world, in real programming. Uh, their very basic concepts are covered in uh, OCA exam. However, in OCP, you will see you know more advanced stuff. Uh, but definitely is one thing you wanna learn, you will definitely see. Date and time and locales, it's, it's a new feature. Uh, in Java, actually, they're immutable. Same thing with string. Uh, don't fall for the trick. Make sure you understand they're immutable, right? If you make change, you need to store the result back into the variable. Uh, and of course, object-oriented programming, you know, class design, how to inherit class, how to extend classes, how interfaces work. And actually, these are the real, you know, really uh, useful concepts in, in real programming, in real life. Uh, so how to build a class, you know, start a class with uh, very basic stuff and then inherit that class, extend uh, those classes. Make sure you understand abstract classes, right? Rules in abstract classes uh, that, you know, if you have a method body, you cannot mark it as abstract because even if it's empty, they put, you know, curly braces open and close, but they add the abstract keyword 
to the abstract function. That's not going to compile. Again, going back to the point, you want to make sure the code compiles. Please do not forget this fact. Well, uh, we talked about all these Java Core APIs. Uh, make sure you understand arrays, right? Arrays and array list. They are a uh, major part of OCA uh, Java 8 certification, right? Arrays are actually quite useful. You know, they're, when you initialize array, basically the size is fixed. You cannot change it, right? Uh, basically, when you want to iterate that, you go through the for loop. You know, we'll talk about time complexity, space complexity later in, in, uh, in later uh, videos. But for now, uh, make sure you understand how to store, how to remove, how to search array list, right? Uh, array lists are quite useful. They're all right, guys, I'm back. Uh, the battery just died, so I had to take the charger and uh, sorry for, you know, a different angle. All right. So we're talking about uh, array list and uh, arrays, and you want to make sure you understand how to insert and remove and, you know, search for the items in array list, right? Make sure you have a good understanding about that. And at the end, uh, of course, polymorphism, you know, uh, it's very you know, you probably get one or two questions about polymorphism where you actually create a, you know, a broad class, like a major class or, uh, you know, let's say class animal, right? And then you basically create sub, some subclasses, a cat, dog, frog, right? And those classes basically inherit, uh, you know, all the features and properties and methods from, from the animal class, right? So when this happens, basically, uh, one function like eat, right, can act differently, you know, for different objects. Let's say, for example, frog, you know, eat function will definitely be different than, you know, cat eat function and uh, dog eat function as well. So it's very simple, com you know, uh, concept, but it's very important and actually very useful. It makes your code really flexible. And these are the patterns, guys. These are the patterns you want to put in your real life coding experience so people can see you have a good understanding about all these, you know, concepts. Uh, one last thing, exception handling. Guys, you will get probably a few questions from exception handling. Make sure you understand how to add exceptions to your methods if you have your check the, you know, exception and uncheck exception. Uncheck exceptions means you don't know, you haven't checked it. It's, it's a runtime exception, right? So that's how you can remember it. Uncheck means it's a runtime. I don't know anything about it yet, right? Checked exceptions are expected to be handled or thrown, right? So if you're calling a function that throws a checked exception, you uh, definitely, uh, you know, have to declare it or you have to handle it. Very simple and easy if you really understand how it works. So again, uh, get the book, right? Do not schedule the exam, right? And put give yourself enough time you know, to get comfortable with. The goal is to learn, uh, you know, how to be a good Java programmer and how, how to follow those nice and, you know, good practices in, in real world. Uh, I'm sure you will have a lot of questions, right? Uh, put it in the comment section. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, follow these steps and uh, I promise you will be able to pass the exam. Again, uh, make sure you the code compiles. Uh, follow our job, uh, read about uh, all the core APIs, right? Finish the book, do not schedule the exam. Get comfortable with, put yourself under pressure and get comfortable with taking the exam. This is a skill you need to learn how to pass the exam, right? And take enough mock tests and make sure you know uh, you get enough score. There's a bunch of courses out there. Uh, of course, there's one, uh, you know, on Udemy, there's a bunch of, uh, on, on all the different, you know, learning platforms you can, you can find them string uh, class learn about the, the equal function in a string and a string builder what's the difference between string and a string builder all the primitives and arithmetic functions right make sure you type all the codes in notepad or notepad plus plus something that does not help you to compile the code and to see if the code compiles or not you have to be able to imagine the code compile the code in your head and come up with the right answer uh, and at the end get a good night's sleep right and uh, you'll definitely pass it and you'll become Java uh, certified programmer. Uh, any comments below? Uh, until next time, bye.